I'm Randy Reed, editor of the Edison Report, and we're here at Light Fair in Philadelphia, and I'm with Mark McClear, the VP of Americas for Seoul Semiconductor. Mark, welcome. Hey, Randy. And before we start, just a personal story for our audience. Uh, I was very much against LED early on. And when I was anonymous, Mark used to email me giving me tips of why LED was so good. I was more of an HID guy and a plasma guy. But you're the one that converted me. So I, I want no one was more wrong about LED than me. But I want to thank you for that. My pleasure. All right. I, I've, I've converted a few. I'm sure you have. <laughs> and here we are in 2017, and everything is LED. It's awesome. Maybe a few OLEDs sprinkled in. Now let's talk a little bit about LEDs. Where do you see them going in the future? Yeah, I, I think the uh, the the um, lumen per watt uh, number that we've been chasing and chasing for the last uh, you know decade really is uh, is about to hit a plateau. And I think there's some really interesting things that come from that. Um, when we when you know we get to 220, 230 lumens per watt, I think that's going to probably at the be, source level. Yeah, at the at the LED. Yeah, thanks for that clarification. At the component level, about 220, 230. But then you can do some really interesting things. You can take that extra lumens per watt, which is remember twice what a what the best traditional lighting sources right. are. Right. And you can actually use that in different creative ways. So you can convert that to uh, spectrum and make high CRI. You can convert that to lower CCT, which is better for some uh, outdoor applications. Um, yeah, and, or you can just really drive the LEDs really hard and uh, reduce costs. So I think it, it, um, it, it, allows, uh, it allows for some more creativity um, in the application side of it. So what do you think is the max? If we're at about, yeah, about, uh, if we're talking about white light on the black body, about 220, 230. I think that's about it. Okay, okay. Um, let's talk for a minute about the old, the 3535, which is the high power sure. LED in the mid-power LED, mm -hmm. and then the Y-COP that we've seen yeah. from Seoul. Okay. So educate the audience. Okay, the so the, the, the 3535, 3535, we would call it, uh, uh, has been around since 2009, um, which is you know almost a decade, which is a very, very long time in LED years, right? right. Um, really not a lot of uh, innovation, a lot of change. I mean, they've gotten a bit brighter year upon year, and, you know, right. and, and, uh, and there's been some, uh, some some in innovation, but for the most part, um, y y the the LED that was bought in 2009 looks exactly like the LED that was bought in 2017 on the 3535. What uh, what YCOP is is really two generations ahead of that. And when I say two generations, I'm being very specific because um, there was a, a chip scale package that came out about two years ago. It came uh, actually from the uh, uh, LED TV industry. Um, actually didn't uh, get a lot of uh, uh, traction in the lighting space because it really wasn't uh, designed for, um, for lighting applications. YCOP takes some of the best aspects of chip scale package and puts a high power chip in it and w by doing that we're able to uh, really enable applications that, uh, that um, uh, at levels right. that haven't been now, uh, available before. chip scale package, yes. that to me is CSP Correct. and that is mid power. Normally, yes, Normally and, and, and that, that's what's uh, used in, in, uh, in televisions. People just took those uh, LEDs and then tried to sell them in lighting mm -hmm. with very mixed success, I'll say. Um, the YCOP uh, goes an additional level by uh, uh, removing some more packaging components and mm -hmm. uh, putting in a high-powered LED, okay. which th that, en that enables uh, new levels of performance in outdoor. Okay, YCOP stands for? Wafer Integrated Chip on Package. It's okay. it's a bit of a mouthful, uh, uh, but I like uh, Wyckoff. Yeah, Wyckoff. Uh, Wy no. Even that's a little bit of a mouthful. I'll I'll, I'll definitely grant that. But it, 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 it what, what do they say? A, a funny name, uh, great results, right? Sure. Okay. So IES and the new TM30. Sure. How has the industry begun to embrace that, and how have you guys begun to embrace it? Yeah, so, um, so we're seeing more and more, especially from the specification and lighting design community, um, they're definitely asking for that. We've made it a standard part of our uh, uh, characterization and uh, d design packages and protocol. Uh, don't yet put it in our data sheets because it's really not part of the ANSI. There's an ANSI standard for LED data sheets that was just approved um, here a year or two ago, and that's sort of not in there right now, but um, okay. anybody that asks for it, we, uh, we definitely can supply that information, and it's, uh, we, we see more and more people asking for it. Okay. Let's talk for a minute about the IP picture. I cover a lot of uh, IP disputes, yeah. and uh, one, I guess, two weeks ago, pretty large. 
What's driving all these disputes right now? Yeah, yeah so um, the, the LED industry the, at the component level um, has been, uh, been, it's been going through this for, uh, for over a decade, and the, there, there are infringing companies that, uh, that try and put uh, products in the market. And the, it was really what I call a whack-a-mole approach. You know, you get this one and the, the head goes down, and then okay. they pop up in another place. That really hasn't worked real well for the LED community. Um, what you see, what you see now, is a really interesting strategy, which I think is actually going to work. And that is, instead of going after um, the, uh, the the individual companies, we're going after the um, distributors and even the retailers. So um, you know, there are a couple of uh, high visibility lawsuits right now against big box retailers to basically um, stop them at the at the shelf level, which causes the retailer to um, insist on uh, non-infringing products and indemnification. And then, then the uh, d designers, the contract manufacturers, have to use um, IP-free uh, LEDs. And so, and, and so that, that's what's going on at the component level. I think that there's a, there's a whole another story going on at the lighting level, but uh, right, that's but what I would say at the component it's level. It's interesting. So I would think the big box guys have a lot deeper pockets than a lighting designer, right? So that would also be part of the strategy, more money to Right, get. And, they ha and, and, and that's an important point, and I think that, uh, the box stores also have a lot more leverage over their suppliers to insist on contractual terms that require indemnification, and once you've required indemnification, that sort of drains the swamp. Okay. Um, you started in 2005, yeah. am I correct? Yeah. So you were the early of the early adopters. Yeah. Where is is the industry where you thought it would be? Twelve <laughs> years later, it's funny. We put to, I, I put together a slide for our, our CEO at the time, and I had these. I, I, I tried to decide which applications were going to convert to LED and why and when. And um, I, I just threw at the very end a soccer stadium, like a, a, a European football, uh, and I said, eventually this would happen. And I think that one of the things that has surprised me most is that's actually happening. Uh, right. We lit the Super right. Bowl a couple of years ago, and uh, last year as well. Right. Um, right. Uh, right. It, it, it's, it, it's actually, there are... So in your there, wildest there, dreams, yeah. that was what you were thinking I about, thought, lighting I thought that stadium. I thought that might happen, and uh, here, okay. it, here it has already happened. And in and, and just 10 years, it's actually pretty remarkable. It is. I mean, it, it really has gone much faster, obviously, than I thought. Uh, what challenges do you see for the industry coming up? Yeah, so so um, I, th I think uh, uh, intellectual property is definitely one of them. On the uh, when you, when you shift over to the lighting side, there's a whole other uh, layer of uh, uh, of IP. Um, that's uh, that that's definitely one of them. Um, I think uh, what to do with the Internet of Things, what that actually is, and I think there's some good implementations of it and some kind of, wow, really? Uh, you know, I, th I think that's, got, that's sort when of... When you uh, say, wow, uh, really, you're concerned about privacy concerns? Yeah, well, not, not, not so much that is, is, is I think there's, there's always two questions that need to be asked when you're doing any sort of uh, product development, and that is, can we do it? Do we have the technology to do it? And sure. should we do it? And and and, and, and is, is is there a market for this? And I think a lot of people forget to ask the second question. And there's some I think some pretty odd implementations that have come out. But um, I think that out of that, and I think it's natural. I think I think there's some some really great stuff that's going to happen. And um, yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty excited about both of those things. I've been following Soul Semiconductor basically recently since you joined. But tell us, what are some of your strengths? What are some of the markets that you guys do well in? I think the, I think the sole story is different than you're going to see with uh, with other LED companies. Um, ours is uh, we, we see a lot of uh, a lot of the LED component companies uh, shrinking back a little bit, uh, trying to trim the, trim their portfolios and trim their people and uh, uh, to cut back on their investments. Uh, in technology, ours is just the opposite. We are it, ours is an investment store. We are investing in technology. We spend more than 10% of our sales every year in R and D. Um, we we just opened a brand new world scale uh, factory in Vietnam, and we're also investing in people. And um, both uh, myself, as you mentioned, joining the company, but the whole team in North America are examples of that. We're adding a lot of people right. to to try and finally make a really good um, impact in North America where I'll, I'll say we hadn't been uh, strong before. Sure. I was in your booth last night checking it out and I saw a sign that caught my uh, yeah. eye and it said, bold, we do not compete against our customers. That's right. That's right. We are a component company and uh, we are, uh, our business exists to enable our customers. 
So um, we, we don't have a uh, sister division that's making lighting that, that, that could be competing. Uh, um, so I think that that's a, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, that's a really important point and a really important strength of, uh, of Soul Semi. Okay. Well, Mark, thank you very much, and I wish you a great show. Thanks, Randy.